What I've learned over the past year or so of running different businesses is that every single person is just about trying to rip you off. Farmers and ranchers, the people that produce and distribute our food, are no exception here. And I was well aware of this before I had a vendetta against everyone. The marketing terms used in America especially over the past dozens of years such as heart healthy, natural, grade A, are really just appeals to authority these people are using to sell you conventional feedlot garbage. America in particular is worse than everywhere else. It has built this system of stuffing animals full of cheap, high energy crops, sprayed with so many agrochemicals, herbicides, pesticides, fungicides, insecticides, what they're feeding these animals gets them very sick, and then they have to inject those animals with more chemicals to keep them alive. And these American farmers are in no way ready to give up their high profit margin system. It's all about the money. There's a lot to understand due to this various marketing deception. You know, grass fed might not actually mean grass. It can include corn silage, corn stalks. What does organic mean? A cow could be fed organic corn and soy and still be certified organic. Does natural really mean anything? Isn't any food technically natural? We're going over the big three today, beef, pork, and chicken. And I've done videos on eggs and dairy in the past if you guys wanna check those out. Generally speaking, beef is a much safer bet than pork or chicken, and chicken usually edges out pork from a quality standpoint. When you buy grass-fed beef, it usually is fed mostly grass, as well as hay and silage, which is just bundled up grass. So we aren't really concerned about whether the beef is grass-fed or not. We want to look at the coloring of the meat and see what type of quality it is. Pork and chicken are almost always fed grain. You know, the most popular marketing terms for healthy chicken now is organic and free range which just means that the animals get organic versions of corn and soy, and the giant barns these animals are suffocating in have this small plot of grass next to it. That's the legal definition of free range. It's basically the same conventional stuff they're selling at the supermarket. They just slap a label on it and increase the price. For pork, it's even worse. American farmers have relabeled their cheap garbage as heritage breed, usually referring to it as Berkshire, uh, but that's just the breed of the animal. You know, there's some farmers in America that even took the Spanish Iberian pigs, the famous Iberico pork, and are feeding them corn and soy garbage, but selling meat under the Iberico pork label. And I've asked these farmers what they feed their pigs and chickens. Some of them will lie through their teeth just to make a few dollars. And, and that goes for beef as well. I've been lied to by farmers just so they don't have liability. The reason there's plenty of grass-fed beef but not a lot of really high quality properly raised pork and chicken is because raising the cattle on grass is actually affordable. So, you know, most American companies have the grass-fed beef, but then they're selling chicken and pork that is still being fed cheap feed. Again, it all comes down to profit and money. And if these people aren't willing to spend a little more to have a truly high quality product, do you want to buy beef from them? You know, do you want to buy grass-fed beef from a company that is saying, oh, we have heritage breed pork and organic chicken? Instead of using legitimate marketing terms like uh, organic, soy-free, corn-free, pasture-raised eating bugs and insects, you know, being more descriptive about the chickens and actually disclosing what they're feeding the pigs, not just using the breed name. Uh, so let's take a look at the beef, pork, and chicken that I have today, and I'll give you guys my thoughts on what you should be looking for. On the left, we have different beef products from Frankie's Free Range Meat, and on the right, I purchased some of the grain-fed conventional beef from Whole Foods. And if you buy like grass-fed beef from a local supermarket, it'll usually look pretty similar to what we have on Frankie's Free Range Meat. It's not gonna be as fresh, as nicely packaged or cut, but the colors should be pretty similar. Uh, so loosely, in the grass-fed beef, you wanna see a purplish colored flesh, and a beige colored fat. That's a pretty good indicator. Even on this very fatty ground beef we have on Frankie's Free Range Meat, you know, the fat is mostly beige, and the meat that is there is purple. Uh, the Wagyu that we have is actually a little bit leaner than 70-30. Uh, you could tell the fat is yellowish and the meat is still purple. 
The degree of beige to yellow in the grass-fed beef depends on both the breed of cow as well as how much pasture it is on. And you have the grain-fed stuff, the meat is pinkish reddish, and the fat is white. Are you going to see you know, a difference in contrast with lesser quality uh, grass-fed beef? It's tough to say. If a farmer is raising his animals properly, there will be some marbling in the meat. So this is a grass-fed steak you know, where the cow wasn't on as ideal pasture as this cow. You know, so this is plenty of marbling and a lot of marbling, especially considering it's grass fed. It's just, you know, most farmers don't know how to raise their animals right now. So this is, you know, a steak that'll fetch top dollar. You know, if you can buy stuff like this, why would you buy this grain fed crap? So not really too much to focus on beef here. It's just when you are buying grass fed beef, make sure it's packaged nicely. The, the color indicates you're getting what you pay for and that, you know, you're not overpaying for, you know, leaner beef. You know, why would you pay, you know, prime steak prices for something like this? Grass-fed beef, though, is almost always more expensive than grain-fed beef, uh, regardless of the cut, regardless of uh, where it's coming from, buy a few dollars. I mean, if you look in this ground beef, it's like oxidized, it's disgusting. Um, you know, you don't, you don't want this stuff. It's, it's just not good. Uh, Taste-wise... You can almost actually taste the corn and when you eat a grain fed steak it almost like falls apart in your mouth it's kind of gross almost i guess you can consider it's more tender but you know if the muscle of the animal is literally falling apart it says something about you know the quality of what's being raised the pork is definitely the most stunning visual difference and that's because what we're feeding pigs right now is the furthest away from nature in relation to the chicken or beef this is 100 percent acorn fed pasture raised Iberico di Bolota from Spain. The highest quality pork you can buy. It's darker color than the beef. It's deep purple. And this is a uh, pork loin that I got from Whole Foods that's just getting conventional crap. And the color in the meat is an indicator of its nutrition status. So yeah, you have more water soluble vitamins, more minerals, more fat soluble vitamins, but how important is that compared to the negatives? The most important thing is that you're avoiding high omega-6 and you're avoiding the agrochemicals. You, know, you can eat all the conventional meat you want and you'll eventually get the same nutrition as you would from this, except you're going to be consuming so many chemicals, so much omega-6, you, know, you can get to that nutritional status in a healthy way. You know, there's so many downsides and so many negatives. Uh, you know, with pork and chicken, you have the omega-6 concern. Uh, with the grain-fed beef, there's less of an omega-6 concern, but the bigger problem with the grain-fed beef is the chemicals, the herbicides, the pesticides, all that stuff, those metabolites from the antibiotics, uh, whatever remains in the animal that translates to your body. Uh, so this is a product I'm really proud we have. And uh, when we get the farm, hopefully in the next few months, we'll be raising pork like this ourselves. Taste-wise, you're gonna have a deep, nutty, really complex, almost buttery flavor in this Iberico pork. And this stuff is gonna taste bland in comparison. Uh, we didn't really go over the taste differences uh, of the grass versus the grain-fed beef. We, we touched more on the texture, but obviously, you know, the grass-fed beef, sometimes it tastes like it's really grassy uh, from a barnyard, like hay. Other times, it's just like a slight butterscotchy note. And uh, the beef fat we sell on Frankie's Rage Meat, we're actually proud that we're able to uh, source a product that only has that like deep, nutty butterscotch flavor. Very tasty, very palatable from, oh look, even sweet, nutty, and delicious. I didn't see that. So First Light uh, knows what they're doing from a marketing perspective. Have you ever seen someone put nutty on, uh, on beef? With the chicken, it can be a bit harder to tell what quality is because even the best quality chicken, generally speaking, isn't that great. So in the back here is two chickens from Whole Foods. The left one is the regular, conventional. The right one is organic. And, and there's a slight difference, you know. This one's a little bit bigger. Uh, the flesh is like a light pink color. And there's not that much yellow or carotenoids in the fat. If you take this organic chicken, you can tell, you know, the bird's a bit smaller, so it's not injected with as much crap. Uh, the, the meat is a slight bit darker, it's a deeper colored pink, and the fat is, is darker. There's more yellow, and you know, it, it looks more natural uh, from that perspective. But you know, it's only a slight improvement visually from uh, the conventional stuff. 
This is a chicken we have on Frankie's Strange Meat. This is a 100% pasture raised bird, soy free. Uh, you could tell it's you know, the deep orange carotene. It is getting uh, nutrients from the grasses. And most importantly, the flesh, even the breast, is a much darker colored. Uh, it's actually getting closer to a reddish. It's, it's a very deep rosy pink. Uh, so this is, you know, a quality product that, you know, I've been having from time to time at home. Uh, I really get a craving for chicken once in a while. But uh, the main thing that I like on Frankie's syringe meat that I've been able to get you guys uh, is the highest quality feed poultry we have. Corn-free, soy-free, pasture-raised from Spain uh, are quails. And, you know, this is kind of crazy. The meat is, <laughs> it's almost like beef. It's really dark, purple flesh. Uh, this is the boneless quail. I should have probably got the bone and stuff. And see, look, they even left a feather for us. Uh, very natural. This is great to pence here. Uh, higher in B vitamins, higher in minerals, more nutritious. But again, do we need nutrition or are we just trying to avoid high omega-6? Now that, that, that's a, a good question to ask. Are we just trying to avoid the antibiotics, the chemicals, and the negatives as opposed to overloading the positives? Plus, this stuff generally tastes better. Now the higher the quality of the meat is, the better it will taste. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. On Frankie's Free Range Meat, we are really happy and excited that we've been able to provide you guys with high quality, nutritious animal foods at the most affordable price online. And if we've been able to do this in just over a year, something else these other companies have never wanted or been able to do, you're going to be really excited for the next few months next year. Uh, we're going to have some truly unique products that aren't on the market. And uh, you guys can tell we're genuine because you know, Frankie Boy can't even afford a haircut. He hasn't made any money yet. Uh, so hopefully that changes. Otherwise, uh, I don't know. We'll see how things go. Uh, so if you guys uh, would like to try out some of our products, uh, definitely check out FrankieSearrangeMeat.com. Uh, otherwise, you know, definitely just sign up for the newsletter on, on both websites, all the websites below, uh, just to stay updated with uh, various things we're doing over the next few months. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow's video. And we're going to be back uh, live streaming tomorrow around uh, 3 or 4 p.m. Eastern time.